the big list of all the little things. That's what we're talking about today. Hi, this is Frank Buck, and this is the place to be if you want to get organized and make it look easy. This is the time of year when brand new teachers will be preparing classrooms for the very first time. Other teachers, some with significant years under their belt, are moving from one school to another and beginning life in a new situation. Both groups face a significant learning curve because every school is unique with its own procedures, traditions, and personalities. This episode addresses teachers specifically. However, the concept and many of the examples apply to people in many fields who are taking on a new role in new locations. So much to do, so much to learn. The learning curve is steep and the time is short. But what if the new teacher had a checklist to make induction more systematic and far easier? Well, this video supplies that tool. If you're a new teacher or you care about someone who is, then share this video with them. It's a list of little stuff, but these little things add up to being ready when the first bell sounds. And when you're new on the job, being ready is a big thing. So let's dive in first with the people you will meet. Education is a people profession. If your initial year is successful, you will look back on it and remember specific people who helped make it so. Get to know them before you need them. Have you met and begun to form a good relationship with the following people in your school? The principal, the assistant principal, the guidance counselor, the school psychologist, the special ed team, teachers at your grade level, the professional development coordinator, the union representative, the administrative assistant in the school, the secretary bookkeeper, the school nurse, the custodians, the cafeteria staff, the librarian or media specialist, specialty teachers such as PE, art, music, foreign language, uh, instructional aides, you're a mentor teacher, the president of the PTO, and school board members if your principal thinks that that's a good idea. Next, let's look at the places you'll find. You don't have to spend the first week of school being lost. Take some time now to acquaint yourself with the building. Do you know how to find each of the following places in your new school? The office classrooms, not only your own, but the others on your grade level, how the different wings or pods are laid out and where they're located, the student bathrooms, the staff bathrooms, the teacher's lounge, the, the media center, supply rooms, uh, the custodian's closet, the cafeteria, the auditorium, the gymnasium and locker rooms, the teacher workroom with the copier, paper cutter, etc. The door that you should use for fire drills when they occur and where your class is to stand during those fire drills. Let's talk about the equipment you'll use. Some of the most stressful moments come when equipment does not work. Often though, the fault is not with the equipment. The user just hasn't taken the time to learn how to use it. So do you know how to operate the following pieces of equipment in your new school? Take time now to save time later. The copier with any code that you may need to punch in. The computers, uh, including your laptop computer that's been issued to you. Uh, how to access the computer network. The projector and how it connects to the computer. The smart board, same idea there. Document camera, TV, DVD, the laminator, the paper cutter, the uh, die cut machine perhaps, uh, a spiral bookmaker. The list could go on and on, and it's going to differ from school to school. Next, let's talk about the records you will keep. Record keeping is one of those peripheral areas that comes with the teaching profession. Now, doing great things with students is first and foremost. However, failure to handle record keeping causes bottlenecks and can quickly make a teacher unpopular with coworkers. So do you know your responsibility in each of the following areas? Attendance and tardies lunch count, cumulative records, report cards and progress reports, parent conference notes, 
uh, professional development hours, uh, phone conference records, sick days, professional days, funeral observances, uh, where are the forms, what's the procedure for all of that, expense reports, purchase orders. Next are the systems that you'll create. Simple systems make the classroom operate smoothly. So do you have a plan for preparing the following items? Substitute folder, a mailbox system for the students, portfolio system, uh, creating classes in a learning management system such as Google Classroom, curriculum folders, lesson plans, grade books. Then there, there are the procedures you'll follow. Every school operates differently. Soon procedures will be second nature, but initially you'll have a great deal to learn. A good mentor will help you learn how your new school handles this checklist of topics. Legal responsibilities such as IEPs and 504 plans. The norms of the school such as how the day begins, transitions between classes, uh, going to assemblies, uh, daily dismissal, duties such as bus duty or lunchroom duty, school discipline policy, procedures for sending students out of the room for discipline, allowing students to work in the room alone, allowing students to go to the media center or uh, perhaps the computer lab to work alone, uh, policy for sending notes home, the policy for uh, when they're visitors to the school. Do you need them to go to the school office to sign in? Do they need a particular badge that they have to wear? Uh, bus schedules and duty rosters. What to do with students who arrive to school early? What to do with students who miss the school bus home? How to order supplies? Procedure for using machines. Um, in other words, the various codes you might have to punch in. Specific times when you're able to use them. Uh, perhaps do instructional aids do all of the copying for you. Uh, how to sign out audiovisual equipment. How to sign out uh, a computer cart or tablet cart. Procedures for rainy days to get your paycheck or pay stub. The location of the coffee and vending machines, that's a pretty good one to know. Procedures for emergency drills. Procedures for uh, requesting to be able to attend conferences or seminars. The required paperwork for yourself. Uh, required paperwork to send home to families. And again, the list could go on and on and it'll differ from school to school. Next, next let's talk about the town where you'll teach. Are you new to the community? Explore your new surroundings. In particular, become familiar with attractions that will make living there more enjoyable. Do you know the location of the district office? How about the location of other district schools? What about the location of the public library or nearby museums? What about movie theaters? What about the location of the teacher supply store in your area? Next, there's the contact information that you'll need. When you need help, it's often only a phone call away, but the question is whether or not you have the needed phone numbers at hand. So do you know contact information for each of the following people or departments? The school, your principal, your mentor teacher, grade level partners, the substitute teacher line, the human resources department, the district office, the payroll department, the PTA president, other staff members, the parents of your students. And do you perhaps need a particular code in order to call out from your classroom or call out from the school? Next, let's talk about the learning environment that you will structure. The first day is approaching. Have you prepared the following items? bulletin boards, learning centers, classroom bookcases, your name outside the door, student name tags for desks, cubbies, the locker area or hooks, seating chart, a schedule for the day, and sufficient desks and chairs. And next, the supplies you'll need. Where to find a box of staples is a little thing. But when the stapler runs out in the middle of a project, being able to locate where staples are located becomes a big thing. So have you secured or know where to get the following supplies for you and the class? The digital plan book, 
and how to access it and instructions for using it. Same with the digital grade book, textbooks and teacher materials, the school calendar, including holidays and test dates, the keys to the classroom, your desk, filing cabinets in the closet, copy paper, lined paper, graph paper, construction paper, note cards, staplers and staples, chart paper, erasers, tape and tape dispensers, sticky notes, paper clips, whiteboard markers and eraser, pens, pencils, manila file folders, hanging file folders with the little plastic tabs to label things, uh, pocket folders, rubber bands, scissors, rulers, glue and glue sticks, crayons, markers, composition books. Wow, a lot to know, a lot to find out. Next, let's talk about the cooperation that you will foster. Parents are your allies. You each play a role in helping young people grow to be responsible adults. So do you have a checklist for home and school communication, including things like uh, emergency information, uh, classroom rules and policies for discipline, homework and grading, uh, dates for state testing and the procedures that are involved with state testing, parent volunteer forms, uh, field trips, chaperone information, email templates that are gonna save you time and not having to type the same thing over and over and over, um, the ability to produce a nice newsletter for parents, a class website, some kind of homework website where parents can see what the homework is without emailing you or calling you on the phone, uh, getting your voicemail set up with a nice outgoing greeting, Little things are big things. You'll find nothing on this checklist to be difficult. The difficulty lies in thinking through all of the little things that add up to a successful start in a new place. And thankfully, you didn't have to make the list. Alvin Toffler's noted for the quote, you've got to think about the big things while you're doing the small things so that all the small things go in the right direction. So as you begin a new year in a new place, May all the small things go in the right direction for you. May the little things you do to prepare for the day when the buses roll help you to accomplish the big things in your future. Now, as a special bonus, you can have access to this entire checklist. Come over to frankbuck or frankbuck.org, my website, and check out this week's post. It's all there for you. Thanks for stopping by today. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and take a look at these two videos right over here. I think you'll enjoy them and subscribe to the channel for more videos. This has been Frank Buck, helping you get organized and make it look easy.